So today's video is talking about a fairly common task. When you have a web page that has user input, person you want them to fill in a label and a number, and you want to take that information, you want to put it inside of a JavaScript object. Maybe you're going to take that object and send it off to the server. Maybe you're going to put it into local storage. Maybe you just need to have it in an object that you can pass it someplace else to be displayed. In any case, you need to take what the user types and put that inside of a JavaScript object. So let's look at how we do this. Here's my code for the page. We've got a form element inside of which I've got two inputs, one that's text, one that's number, one called title, one called YR for year, and then I've got a button. When the person clicks this button, I'm going to take the values out of these things and put them into a JavaScript object. All right, in the script. Down at the bottom here, here's my DOM content loaded. Always start with this. Make sure that the page is loaded before we try to run things on the page. We've got the button in the form. When that gets clicked, we're going to call the function add movie. So here is our function add movie right here. And I've got about half of it written, or a little bit more than half. First thing I'm doing inside of here, this first line, ev prevent default. Now, ev is being passed in. Whenever you have a click event, so some sort of a mouse event, a load event, an event, you call a function based on that event. So this event triggers the function running. JavaScript will pass to your function that event. So ev, this is the event. And we're saying prevent default. OK, what does that mean? You can see in my comment here to stop the form from submitting. If we look at the form right here, my button is inside of this form element. Because it is inside of a form, when you click on it, the default behavior of any browser is if you click on a button and it's the only button inside of a form, even though it's not a type submit input element, it's a button. You've clicked it. It's inside of a form. The browser says, hey, you want to submit the form. I'm going to do that. I don't care what you say. I'm going to try to send this data somewhere and reload the page. I don't want the page to reload because I will lose all my data. So prevent default is telling the browser, don't do what you would normally do. OK, great. My form doesn't submit. Now I'm going to create an object. It's just local inside my function called movie. Inside of it, I'm going to create three properties, ID, title, and year. The ID, just to get something simple and unique, I'm grabbing the current timestamp. So date.now, this method will give me the current timestamp. I put that into the ID. My title is going to be get element by ID title. That is up here. It's the input text type with the ID title. I want its value attribute. Just like here, if I put value equals Jaws, there's a movie. It's inside of here. Now, this will be the default when the page loads. And every time you reset the form, this is what it's going to go back to. I don't want that there. So I can either put value with nothing inside of it, or I can just omit the value altogether. And it'll do the same thing. But down here, this gives me what the user has written. Same thing for the year. I'm getting the value of what they've written. And these will be the values for these properties inside of my movie object. Simple enough. Once I've done that, I take my movie object and I'm adding it to an array that I created called movies right up here. So it's outside of my function. I created this thing called movies. It's an array. And every time I add something, I'm adding it to this array. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of objects that look something like this being added to this array. Every time I click the Add button, I'm sticking it in there. Now, I'm not doing any validation. I should do an if statement at least to make sure that they have written something in the form. But that aside, I'm putting all these new movies objects into the movies array. Then I'm calling reset on my form. Now, this is an old way of targeting a form. There is a forms object inside the document object that is a list of all the forms on your page. You could also do document.querySelector form and it would get you the same result. So we could say document query selector form dot reset. 
that would do the exact same thing. So I'll leave them both in there as comments. Okay. Now, when I add it, I'm writing out the object in my console, and I'm also going to write out, I have a pre-tag, so pre-formatted text. I'm going to set its text content to whatever the new movie is. Okay, so let's run this once on here. There we go, we'll put The Hobbit, which I can't remember exactly. We're going to guess on 2013. There we are. So here's my array with an object inside of it. There's the values. And let's add Deadpool now. Again, I'm going to guess on 2015. There we are. And if I open up this, there's my movies object. And inside of it, the two movies. Okay, great. So that's working. We are taking user input and we're putting it inside of an object. We're putting that object inside of an array. Now we actually have something useful. And if we wanted to save it to local storage or send it somewhere, we could. So I'll just, as a quick example, I will take it and save it to local storage. So local storage set item my movie list and everything that you put into local storage has to be a string. So we have to call json.stringify on whatever it is that we're putting inside there. This is going to be the value and we're going to take the movies array, not the movie object we just created, but the movies array. And we're going to take that and we're going to put that into local storage. There we go. Restart this. Let's quickly go through this. 2013, Deadpool, 2015, and there we go. We've added it. Now let's go and take a look at our local storage in the browser. Inside of there, there we have it. So my movie list has now saved with these objects inside of it. Great. And that's it. That's all there is to taking a user input, any amount of user input, and saving it into an object. You can do whatever you want with it. Saving, a local, saving it in local storage is just one of the options. So I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. In the description, I will leave a link to the code gist for this code so you've got it so you can experiment with it. And as always, thanks for watching.